Hello, uh, I'm Peter Takac. I'm uh, on the piano faculty here at Oberlin, and I'm chatting with my good friend and colleague, uh, Tim Lefebvre, uh, thinking about talking about a recital that's coming up. Um, and I wanted to give a little background as to the origin of this program, uh, because we had planned to do the song cycle by Beethoven on the Ferne Galicte, uh, to the distant beloved uh, as a part of a year long celebration of Beethoven's 250th uh, birthday. Uh, of course, that got canceled, uh, as did everything else, because of the times that we're living in at the moment. And so the summer passed by, and then Tim and I got to chatting and saying, you know, we'd love to do the Beethoven again. Uh, so let's think of a program that would incorporate that and some other things that we both like and love. Um, so the Beethoven cycle um, is kind of unusual. It's really the only one of this kind that Beethoven wrote and it may be the first sort of interconnected song cycle ever written uh, in a way that later on Schubert and others uh, made very familiar. Uh, and, you know, it has the subject of the distant beloved, which some people think may be related to uh, Beethoven's uh, relationship with the so-called immortal beloved, whose identity is still in dispute. Uh, we're not sure that that's the case, but it seems to have some reference to some kind of uh, love that may never be uh, consummated that may never happen. <clears throat> and just as an aside, you know, the beautiful theme from this song was later used by Schumann in his uh, Piano Fantasy, Opus 17. Uh, and so there, that probably is a very direct connection to Clara Schumann. So I think there's a, quite a romantic connotation to this cycle. <clears throat> and uh, we certainly look forward to performing it as we were hoping to do in the spring. And then Tim and I talked and we came up with a program that we're both enjoying a lot. So I'm going to let Tim talk about some of the works that we're putting around the Beethoven. Sure. I think one of the things before we get off of the Beethoven that's unique about the cycle um, and makes it different from cycles that came later was that Beethoven really meant it as one kind of extended song. Even though there are these separate songs without, you, you don't really perform any of the individual songs of Andi Fernigalipta alone, right? So you, right. you're always, you know, used to hearing Andi Fernigalipta as one piece, whereas, you know, Dichte Liebe and, and Andi Fernig, um, Winterreise and all that, those songs, some of them can live on their own without being in the cycle. So it's interesting that um, right. Beethoven had in mind just one extended song, you know? Exactly. Right. So uh, when Peter was uh, talking to me in the summer about doing this program, and uh, so let's just figure out what else we could add to the the Beethoven um, uh, cycle, I said, well, let's let's do things that, you know, things that I've done maybe before and that I enjoy. And so we talked about some possibilities and I mentioned Handel. Um, I think, Peter, you actually mentioned the Donkey Show, the Ravel songs, and I, I said, did, sure, I love, I love those. those songs. And, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah they're, they're beautiful. They're, I, I've done them um, a couple of times with orchestra and uh, um, done them several times uh, just with a piano accompaniment. And they're beautiful songs. They're so harmonically rich and, 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 and just so full of of that kind of um, Don Quixote spirit of of that that kind of fighter and that lover all together. It's really they're really wonderful pieces. And then um, I suggested to Peter, let's do some Charles Ives. And so these are a little different, I think, for for both of us to collaborate together on these songs. They're they're a lot of fun. They're 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 very much. Um, uh, they can be tender at times. They can be just a little crazy. They can be just full of this raw emotion at the end. But you know, Charles Ives was like that. He had just, you know, very unique um, harmonic um, structures and a unique um, melodic um, format, but the, they are very tuneful, all of them. They're just really right. different and unique, and, and I think they're always very popular with the audiences, so. They have a lot of character I've enjoyed. I've never played them before, but I've certainly enjoyed working on them with you. There, for oh. some reason, they remind, they remind me of Mark Twain. Yeah, right. Kind of American humor and a kind of maverick spirit and so on. So uh, it's uh, extremely um, enjoyable and very witty music. Yeah, that's so, a great way to put it. Uh, and, you know, I might mention that uh, Handel was uh, one of Beethoven's great models. Yeah. I admired Handel a great deal because there was something very solemn and very grand about 
handle that they don't admire and try to emulate. Um, yeah, so we're starting so, with these three handle pieces that they're both, they're all arias from operas. And um, the first two are very, very popular. Most people will know them, the um, Where Air You Walk um, from Semele, and then uh, Ombra Mai Fu from Xerxes, um, beautiful tune, the Largo that people often talk about. And then the final one is a, a, a fast 16th note driven um, song of, of Furies of the Wind, Del Minachar del Vento from Ottone. So they're, um, I always say about Handel, they're just so good for the voice. Um, and they're just just very satisfying to sing. So we were opening the, the recital with that nice handle group. So. so the handle group, then we have the Beethoven cycle, and then the three Ravel Don, Don Quixote yes. songs, which are late Ravel, by the way, right. maybe his yeah. last work. Yeah, I think then, so. Yeah. Uh, closing with the four songs uh, by Charles Ives. Yes. So I hope everybody joins us on Thursday evening, uh, 7.30 is going to be streamed from Warner Concert Hall and uh, we look forward to it. We hope you enjoy it. Yes, thank you.